death experiences and there have been several books who have uh, written on life after death and whether or not it exists. Well, for eight minutes, the life of our next guest was hanging in the balance after she was mistakenly given a shot of morphine that literally caused her to stop breathing. She was there, literally, on the brink of death. She had a terrifying experience that changed her life. She's here to talk about it. Please welcome to the 700 Club from Dallas, Texas, Kay Lynn Trimble. Kay, we'd like to hear you from the program. Now, you were in the hospital. Yes. For what? Well, I was hemorrhaging. My husband had come home that day and found me hemorrhaging to death with female problems on the bathroom floor. And my husband and I had been involved in one of the world's largest cults. And I had started reading the Bible because my neighbor, who was a Baptist, had given me a good news for modern man New Testament and it was the first time in 16 years of our marriage that I had ever read the Word of God we had been involved in this cult we did not read the Word of God except to argue with Christians so God had begun working on me when this incident happened but I was in a terrible state of confusion when my husband found me that morning I had gone into my bedroom after being sick for nearly four months and said, God, I don't know if you're real, I don't know who you are, I don't know who I am, and I just want to die. And I cursed God and my family, and I took my fist and I shoved it in the wall, and about three hours later, my husband found me hemorrhaging to death in the bathroom floor. So he picked you up and he rushed you to the hospital. Yes. All right, and then even after they started working in the hospital, they were having some problems with you. Yes, I was bleeding so much, they put me down very deep under the anesthetic, and the blood they were giving me was not holding in my body. I just kept bleeding out. And they began to do surgery on me. And because of the length of the surgery and having to go under the anesthetic so deep, I had not come out as you normally should in recovery room until late that day. And my doctor had left orders not to give me any medication because I was so deep under the anesthetic. And at 5 o'clock that afternoon, a nurse did not read the orders, came in, gave me an injection. I stopped breathing. I saw my spirit leave my body. I stood above the bed and watched as they worked upon my body. My mother was in the room, and I thought, good, I'm dead. And I didn't know the religion that we were in was not going to save me from hell. Oh, now, you were looking forward to a blissful life after, right? Yes. In our particular religion, we were taught that we could become like God, there would be other gods, and that we would go to the celestial kingdom. Well, instead, I found my spirit being sucked down into the very pits of hell itself. And I saw that place. I heard demons screaming, we've got another one. And it is so horrible that I pray to God no one ever has to go into that place. And I heard people screaming in agony, just begging, why am I here, why am I here? And that's what I was saying, is why am I here and where is this place? Because you see, the church that we belong to did not believe in hell or the cross. But sometimes doctors have said that this is just a psychological playback of something that you believed in as a child. But you didn't believe in, in hell, and you didn't have any idea, and yet you said you felt your body being sucked down into it? Yes, your it was spirit? my spirit was going, went down into the pits of hell, and it was black and dark, but a lot of flames and a tremendous amount of heat. And it I just, mean, could you feel this uh, yes. in, in your spirit? Yes, I felt like I was being smothered. And I heard demons laughing and saying, we've got another one. Did you, what did you feel, you know, people say, what did you feel, what did you feel, it, could you feel all these things in your spirit, your body obviously was laying on the table, what, could you experience, did you experience terror and, and what? Yes, I was terrified, I just kept crying out, I don't believe, I don't belong here, I don't belong here, why am I here? And about eight minutes later, my physician, who was a spirit-filled Christian, came into my room and the Holy Spirit spoke to him to drop this medicine in my IV or they were going to lose me physically and he did so and my spirit went right back out of hell right back down into my body and I sat up and I said I've been gone and he knew that God was going to do something with my life and the Holy Spirit told him to go home and intercede that physically I might live to have another chance to know Jesus Christ as my Lord. And you did live. Right? Yes, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> now, now, how did you finally get the real truth? Okay, 
that whole night I was in and out of hell. My spirit would leave my body and I'd go into hell. I would quit breathing. I was having physical problems recovering from this surgery. And my mother was with me. And I would leave my body and every time I left it, it would just suck down into the deepest parts of hell. And I just kept getting into it deeper and deeper and deeper. And I heard more and more people screaming. I cannot tell you how horrible it is because there's millions of people in that pit and they can't get out. And around 5 o'clock in the morning, I saw a tiny pinpoint of light in that pit. And this friend of ours who had been in this religious system we were in had died at Christmas. And he spoke to me and he said, don't make the same mistake I made. And if I had not heard his voice, I would not have recognized him. He was in so much agony and torment. And I know now that Jesus Christ took the keys of hell and death away from the devil. And he would given orders they were going to let me out of that place. And I ran towards that pinpoint of light. And that light went up and up into the sky. It was just a beautiful, huge, bright tunnel of light. And at the end of that tunnel of light was a huge, bright, gold, burning cross. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was standing in front of that cross in all his glory and power. And I fell on my face and I said, my God, my Savior, forgive me. And he spoke these words to me. He said, seek Jesus Christ and the cross. Leave the Mormon church or the hell you've left will be your eternity. And I said, my God, my Savior, forgive me. And he reached out his hands to me, and he said, Daughter, why dost thou weep? Thou hast forgiven. And I saw the Lord, hallelujah, and I ran into his arms, and I became one with him, and he is alive. He is real. He is not a dead Jesus. Glory! God bless you. Thank you very much for coming. That's what it's all about, man.